What's up guys? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. This video is all about the different ways that you can implement a sump into a reef aquarium system. I'm really not going to get into depth on the benefits of a sump, but I can touch real quick on the highlights. In short, a sump is another container of water that complements your display tank. It's super helpful in reef aquariums because it's essentially a spot to house all your mechanical components of life support that would otherwise have to be bolted onto your display tank. Getting as much of the equipment out of the display tank as possible is a beneficial thing aesthetically, and in a sump it gives you a lot more flexibility on the size of the equipment that you're able to use. It also increases the overall volume of the aquarium, which helps with stability of both chemistry and temperature. Lastly, it can be broken up into specialized sections and customized to how you want to be maintaining this reef tank. Want to use filter socks? Cool, no problem. Extra large section to house a monster sized protein skimmer? Sure, why not? Refugium, reactors, pretty much anything is possible. That's just a really general overview of the major benefits of a sump. There's a reason why it is one of the most popular implementations in reef aquariums. It's very flexible. Most hobbyists that are in this hobby for a long time eventually gravitate to this type of system. Very, very practical. So given that backdrop, let's get into the different ways that you can implement a sump into your reef aquarium system. So the first and probably the most common method is to just have it underneath the aquarium. We don't do that a lot here, but there are a handful of aquariums where we do exactly that. The benefits of doing this is that it works in a very compact footprint. Not everybody's got all the room in the world to set up a tank. It's bad enough that in many cases this is a very large aquarium and to also eat up more square footage with another large aquarium essentially in the form of this sump, it can be too much for a lot of people's places. Especially if you live in a small apartment, every little bit of square footage matters and to have that underneath your main aquarium, that's obviously a big benefit. Another benefit is simplified plumbing. This can be a pro and a con, but you don't have very far to go from your main display tank down to your sump. That can be an issue given that you might be working in, in some tight spaces, there's not a lot of room to incorporate valves and whatnot, but it is going to be shorter and simpler. And that can be a major benefit given the price tag of plumbing these days. Right now we're in the early parts of 2023 and Schedule 80 fittings, for example, are astronomically expensive. An inch and a half T is $15, it's, it's wild. So cutting down on a lot of that complexity, it's, it's pretty nice, it's pretty nice. So the cons, the cons of having a sump directly underneath your main aquarium. It's just harder to work down in there. You are limited to the size of your stand. You're limited to the size of the aquarium itself. There's going to be a lot of relatively uncomfortable reef yoga to do your day-to-day -day maintenance down there. It also limits the size of the equipment that you're able to use. If, for example, you wanted to use a very large protein skimmer, a lot of those tend to be external. Those are pretty much out of the equation right off the bat. You might not have enough room for the size of sump that you want and also some of the other accessories and peripherals. For example, a lot of times people will budget space for the sump itself, but then later on they want to add a calcium reactor, they want to add a calcwasser reactor, they want to add carbon and GFO and all these other different components that take up space. And there just isn't that much room down in there anymore and so you kind of have to get very creative view if you want to use those technologies. Going back to the plumbing issue, yes plumbing can be simpler but it's going to be tighter and it's going to be more difficult to work down in there to get the kind of plumbing that you want to do. Luckily plumbing is generally one of those things that you only need to do once if you do it properly but yeah it's, it's tight down there sometimes and you don't have a ton of clearance. In the most compact setups, your measurements have to be just 
on the ball because the tolerances are very tight. You don't have a lot of wiggle room there. Also, leaking. And the downside of having it leak right there, your sump is right there connected to the thing holding up your display tank. Most everybody out there has a stand made of wood. Uh, we use a lot of aluminum here. Aluminum is getting very popular, but I'd say the vast majority out there, you're talking about wooden stands. Yeah, yeah, over time, these leaks and different little maintenance flubs, they take a toll on wooden stands. And you do have a large container of water sitting right there on top of this thing. So that's definitely a downside. Last little bit that I'll add, and it does relate to the maintenance of this thing. It's dark down there. Most of these sumps are very convenient. They're underneath your home aquarium, but it's usually in like a cabinet of some sort. And a lot of people don't think ahead to having some sort of utility light. So when you're working down there, you can actually see sometimes fish and inverts make their way down into your sump. Sometimes a metal fitting or something like that might fall into your sump or some device. You'll want to be able to see very, very clearly to be able to get around and do the proper maintenance. Of course, this is assuming that you don't have refugium because a refugium, obviously, it would have its own light. But there's a lot of dark, no light implementations of a sump. And that's something that you're going to want to plan around from the beginning. The second implementation is to have it offset from the tank. And so this is a situation where you have a lot of extra room to work with. You're not really constrained that much by space. So you effectively have your sump sitting alongside the reef aquarium. Pretty cool. Obvious benefits, there is more room to work. There is more light. And biggest thing is when something goes wrong, you can see it and hear it very easily because it is not an out of sight, out of mind situation. A lot of times people like to just be able to put their sump underneath their stand, close up all the doors, and everything's gonna be great. A lot of times everything's not gonna be great. And when those not great things happen, it is better to be in your face and open and obvious rather than it potentially hiding from view for a little while and then it turns into like a bigger catastrophe. Another benefit. It gets around that limitation that we were having with the size of equipment that you're able to use on your system. For example, that big giant protein skimmer, that external six foot tall skimmer, suddenly not a problem anymore. If you wanted to set up a table right next to it to house a dozen different reactors, you could do that. You could get even super spicy and build a rack above your sump. That could be a part of the entire implementation. You can get super crazy Frankenstein's laboratory with this whole thing. Now, there are some obvious downsides. The space required, that is a big deal for a lot of folks. The other downside, that might not be the most aesthetically pleasing thing. Not everybody is into the skeletonized clockwork of a reef aquarium system. And certainly many significant others are not gonna sign off on this either. If you have children, or extremely curious pets, you know, you might have some issues there. There are some benefits to having everything kind of locked up and this might not work for you. But there are some pros and some cons to this offset design. Next up, how about just having it in another room entirely? This is a variant of that offset. The benefits of this is that you are essentially eliminating all that clutter and noise, and you're just isolating it to its own room. You can potentially design this room with all the utilities that you need. For example, sinks, and if you're in the construction phase, floor drains, very, very, very helpful. Also, potentially a lot of room to work. In the previous implementation where you have your main show tank, and then you have this offset sump, it might be in a place that gets a lot of traffic. And while you do have more room to work with that type of system, it still might be a little bit constricted. Whereas if it is in another room entirely, I mean, it could be an entire workshop back there for you. You also have the benefit of being able to like close the whole thing up. So small children, curious pets, less of an issue. 
There are a couple of cons to this. Obviously, not everybody has the ability just to dedicate an entire room to this sort of thing. Sometimes people use a utility room already. So for example, that it would have their hot water heater, their furnace, whatever else they have going on to run their house. And that can be an issue when you're placing a relatively large sump right along next to all that stuff. Salt water evaporates and it could potentially reduce the lifespan of all of that equipment that runs your house. So not phenomenal, right? The other downside is that if there is a problem, it's kind of hidden in another room entirely. That funny noise, water on the floor, unless you closely monitor that or you're in that room all the time, it might go unnoticed for a little while. That kind of goes back to the out of sight, out of mind problem. You've really maximized the risk of that because it is entirely pushed off into its own space and it could be a little while before you notice it unless it manifests in your actual display tank. Next up, how about the basement? This is taking that another room setup to the next level, which happens to be below. <laughs> so it's going to further isolate clutter and noise. And real quick, one little tip if you wanted to do this, which I found like super clever. If you ever wanted to cut a hole into the floor to send all your plumbing down, instead of taking like hole saws and cutting in just the exact size you need for the plumbing to go down, is just to get a register and you cut that into that space. The reason is you, if you ever decide to like leave the hobby or whatever, you already have that covering. You just slot that thing in there, no harm, no foul. Also, it's going to give all of that plumbing and whatever you need to run plenty of room to breathe. Because guys, there's going to eventually be more stuff that you want to connect between your display tank and the sump in the basement. Having the flexibility of that little rectangle rather than every single hole being this perfectly fitted thing Trust me, you'll want that extra space around. Get a register, cut a rectangle. Of all these different options, this is perhaps my favorite, but there are some downsides as well, and we should cover those. First off, the pump. The pump is responsible for a heck of a lot now, and it has to deliver flow back to your display tank at pressure from the basement. Suddenly, a lot of pumps that might have been a great option are no longer great options because of that head pressure requirement. A lot of times even when a pump says it can handle pressure and you look at that little flow graph and it should be alright, in practice, 30 feet of head pressure is a ton of head pressure. There's only a handful of pumps that I would even really trust for this now and some of them can get really, really, really pricey. This also goes without saying, but you will have to work on both the tank upstairs and the sump downstairs, meaning that you're really going to want to have useful utilities both upstairs and downstairs. For example, how close is your sink both upstairs and downstairs? We mentioned earlier that one of the big benefits to having a sump is that you remove a lot of your devices and you relegate that down into the sump. But there are still plenty of things that are still in your display tank, power heads and whatnot. All that stuff does need maintenance. Heck, even ignoring the power heads, glass cleaning, aquascaping, cleaning off your rocks, moving corals, flipping over snails, catching a sick fish, all these things have to happen, obviously, in the display tank. So you'll want to think ahead about your access to things like sinks and whatnot. Also, with water changes, salt storage is a thing. If you're storing a lot of salt downstairs, it can be no fun to lug this stuff down there. Like stairs and heavy salt boxes, not the most fun thing in the world. And for the big tank guys, it's especially fun to move a pallet by hand downstairs. That's like 40, 50 boxes, it's not great. And last thing that I'll mention, some people's basements would really suck to work in. For example, I have a 1800s era farmhouse. It, I think it was built in like 1890 something. Yeah, basements were just built different back then. It's low ceilings. I mean, I could almost touch my head to the ceiling right away. I would personally never put a sump down there. It's tight, gross, 
there's probably mummified remains of actual farmers down there. No, absolutely not. I would love for everybody to have like these spacious finished basements with 12 foot ceilings and whatnot, but that's not the reality for a lot of folks. If you have an older home, it might not be great to have your sump down in the basement because you might just not be very likely to go down there. I certainly don't want to spend very much time in my basement. Anyway, you guys, that is a general overview of how you can incorporate a sump into your system. And we went over all the different pros and cons of each. So in the comments below, let me know, first of all, assuming you have a sump, how do you currently have it set up? And if you were to do it differently, which one of the other options is the most appealing for you? All right, that's it from here. Until next time, happy reefing.